You know, God gets a bad rap oh, uh, a good portion of the time. On Christmas Eve, it was just a hard day. Just straight up hard. I didn't want to get dressed. I didn't want to go around people. I set my recliner with four grandchildren in my living room. Running around and jumping and excited because it's Christmas Eve and we're going to the Great Wolf Lodge. And I'm in my recliner thinking, man... I don't want to go face anybody today. I do not want to put a smile on my face. I I don't want to I don't want to be around people. And so um, I told Sadie, I said, I'm just going to take a shower. And that'll make me feel better. That'll wash off this funk, you know. Because it, it's also like, man, you got these kids, you got to be joyful around. And you got a vacation thing to go to, and you got other people to be around, so you're going to have to get this funk off of you. So I'm in the shower, and I'm just thanking God for the outlavishing, outpouring of love that we have received, because it has been great. There has been um, people that I haven't seen in a very, very long time just stop by and drop off gifts on my kitchen table, um, my neighbor's. I had a whole lady small group adopt the key, adopt the babies and buy their little angel tree stuff. Uh, and they wrapped them up beautifully, brought them to the house, put them under the tree. My neighbors across the street knew that I would, um, that I really wanted a real tree for the kids because we never had one before. So it's like, let's do something different. Anyway, they went out and bought a real tree at the, the works. Like, I have had a lavishing outpouring of love, and I am grateful, but on Christmas Eve, I was still hurting. All right, so I get in the shower, and I'm thanking God for all the people and all the gifts, and I understand that they are His love, that people allow God to use their hands and their feet to show His love, and He lavished love. And, and I thought about it from a human perspective. It's like, how could I ever express my gratitude? How could I ever just really be honest and thank them for what they did? Those just aren't the, the right kind of words. And uh, the Lord reminded me that it was um, better to give than to receive. And my gifting is prayer. So it's like, okay, Lord, then help me, help me to pray for them. And whatever it is they're going through, too, right? Like, their their world may look a certain way, but there may be some stuff in it that needs prayer. And then we went to the Great Wolf Lodge. And there, like, you're enclosed. And there is absolutely nothing in the outside world <laughs> seemingly affecting what's going on in that lodge. There is multitude and multitude of things to keep you busy. There was arcade and this and build a bear. Well, not really build a bear, but um, there was just all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. Like you didn't even have to know what day of the week it was. You're just enclosed in this process of one thing to the next. And I thought, while well, I was at the lodge, I thought I can see why people do drugs. Because they are really escaping their own reality and avoiding the pain that they feel. Because it's, it's like the pain gets suppressed and you, you're just doing, 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 doing all this stuff. And I think about the bad rap that God gets. You know, that he's often blamed for the death of people. You know, well, God did this, and God did that, and why did God do this? And it's, if you put the blame of your hurt and your heartache onto God, that puts a barrier between what He wants to do. And it's your barrier, not His. Um, it's because we have a lack of understanding. The Word of God says, Blessed, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted that's his that's his promise to us bless you heather 
for mourning because you will be comforted. I will comfort you. But if I'm sitting here blaming God for this tragedy, how you don't want comfort from somebody that you're blaming. I mean, I mean, it's like if you saw somebody kill your beloved, you wouldn't turn around and then go to them for comfort. And that's often what we do. We put God in the role as murderer, so we're not going to go to him and ask for comfort. My job with these children is never to place the blame on God for what happens in this earthly realm as if he purposely does these things. It's not his purpose to wound is his purpose to heal. It's not his desire to, to hate on somebody and punish them. It's his desire to love them and restore them. Mourning is a natural process of grief and of death. It should happen and we should allow it to happen. And we should know that when we are mourning, he calls us blessed. For we will be comforted. And he comforted me. And he will continue to comfort. Because that's who he is. He is the comforter. His Holy Spirit, his Raho Kodesh. Comfort her. Comfort her. Be, be asking for that experience and you will have it. Cry out to him and he will, he will comfort. That's who he is. 